It's a big time Wednesday night storm. Tonight, we will finally hear from Charlotte Flair following her merciless attacks on women's champion Asuka. It's the semifinals of the tag team title tournament, and it's two dream matchups. War Machine takes on the Lucha Brothers in a clash of styles, but in our opener, it's a matchup straight out of a video game as the Young Bucks battle the Usos. And in our main event, Buddy Murphy takes on Sin Cara after costing him his shot at the Cruiserweight title last week. It's a mammoth storm, and it all starts right after this announcement. begin with the first of two tag team matches to determine the two teams that will face off for the vacant tag team titles. The Young Bucks coming out first, of course, in the first round they beat the Limitless Legion. And of course, we do have such a fantastic show coming up for you. And coming up after this match, we'll be hearing from Cody Rhodes. One of the men who was part of that eight-man tag team match three weeks ago. Next week is when the fatal four-way to determine the next number one contender for the GAW World Championship is supposed to happen. Uh, but of course, well, we just we don't know what's going on between Alistair Black and we haven't gotten a hold of Kazuchika Okada since last week. So there, there's so much going on right now. For now, we can just enjoy some tag team action. And these are two of the best teams in the world, aren't they? Of course, we know all about the Young Bucks, but coming out right now, Jimmy and Jay Uso. These two men, of course, they made their names in the WWE. They are six-time tag team champions with the WWE and now in GAW they've been here less than a year and they've already made their mark and now they're trying to make their mark against maybe the best team on earth it's the first of our two semi-finals in the tag team title tournament and it starts right now all right two sets of brothers 15 minute time limit it's Matt Jackson starting off for the Young Bucks, and he's getting things started quickly against, I believe that's Jey Uso. Now, so there is a 15-minute time limit here. Uh, of course, that's uh, typical with all GAW tag matches. But if these two teams are to go to a draw, they would actually they would actually re-contest this match next week. So we're not gonna hand we're not gonna hand any team the titles here. Jimmy Uso in for the first time. Beautiful assisted Samoan drop. Getting some booze here are the Usos. Very interesting. Young Bucks are fan favorites, I suppose. The Young Bucks made quick work of the Limitless Legion a couple weeks ago in their first round match. Beautiful all-around performance from Matt and Nick Jackson. The Usos took a very controversial count-out victory over the Gorillas of Destiny. Spear from Matt Jackson. That's what that's what put Keith Lee away a couple weeks ago. Going for the knee and it's reversed. Trying to hoist him up. Jackson gets out of it. Rakes the back in a super kick. Jimmy hits the deck. One, two, and Jay is there to break it up. Matt taking, taking his time, 
Going out to the outside. Standing moonsault. Have yet to see Nick Jackson so far. Maybe now is where we're going to see the younger Buck get in. And here he comes. Looking for that super kick party. But they actually kicked him so hard back into his own corner. Here comes Jey Uso. Couple early strikes. Beautiful performance here from Jay. Jimmy was in serious trouble there. Nick Jackson answers with the jawbreaker. Throwing him back into their own corner. Maybe the Bucks looking to finish this early. Hoist him up. Oh, I think we know where we're going here. More bang for your buck. Jackson hits the moonsault, but not going for a pin, though. He does go looking for the spear, and it's turned into a DDT from Jimmy. That may have been a, a that may have been an error in calculation there, and talk about talk about an error. I'm not sure if he was looking for the punch there from, from Jimmy, but now Jay locking in the Tequila Sunrise. Oh my God, that is deep. He has that Tequila Sunrise cinched in deep. Nothing Nick Jackson can do. And he gives up. I wonder if the Usos are maybe gonna look to end things here. But Matt trying to fight out of the corner. Sending Jay into the corner. The Young Bucks and Jay trying to fight out himself. Falcon Arrow from Jay. Four minutes gone here. And again, it just it, it feels like even more than that. This matchup moving so fast and managing to get the tag in to Nick. But Jay just immediately putting him down. A couple big clotheslines. Boom. Now the Usos are the ones with the advantage. Often underrated when it comes to discussions of the best tag teams in the world. You talk about the Young Bucks. You talk about the Lucha Brothers. You talk about G.O.D. You don't always talk about the Usos. And now Jay sending Nick to the outside. Well, we now have uh, a miscalculation, I think, on the Usos' part. I'm not sure if I would have sent Nick out here. Of course, we talked about this before. The 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 damage that you can do, certainly, uh, is, is notable. But Matt Jackson was on the outside, incapacitated. So you think maybe that you would try to push your advantage and now Nick Jackson has turned the tides a little bit while going for that step up in Zagiri and Jay avoids it. Now looking for that neck breaker. Fans booing and I think they remember what happened last time the Usos were out here. They took a count out victory against G.O.D. And nobody hoping for that again, and it looks like we won't get it. Nick sends Jay back in. Sending him back to his own corner where Matt is there waiting. Are they going to set it up again, maybe? Oh, no, they're going for the Meltzer driver. Looking for the Indy taker. Got it. Beautiful move, and Matt will go for the pin off of that. It's close to his corner. Nick can play defense, too. Oh, Nick couldn't get there quick enough. Jimmy is there to break it up. He avoids the super kick, and now gets Nick into the Russian leg sweep, and suddenly Jimmy Uso has totally turned the tide of this match. Nick is on the outside, but Matt going for the super kick. It's, a, it's avoided by Jay, and then Jay goes for the corkscrew forearm, and that's avoided. What a sequence there, and I can't believe that that Melter driver didn't end the match right then and there. Matt starting to feel it now. Beautiful double hand chops from Matt, and then going for that rollover kick. Matt Jackson fired up. Knee 
into the corner. No sign of Nick Jackson yet. But he's just taking it to Jay Uso, and Jay gets out of it. Monkey flip. Oh, but now Jay may have just turned the tide for himself, beckoning Matt to stand, going for the super kick, and Matt evades. That could have ended it all right here. You want to talk about, you want to talk about the greatest super kicks on earth. These four men probably have it right here, Matt. Northern Lights suplex, locomotion, Northern Lights suplex with the bridge. And I think that was rope break there. Maybe with Jay's foot. These four men probably have the four best super kicks in the business. Of course, the Young Bucks known for throwing their super kick parties. And now Matt sends Jay over the top. Seven minutes left, Matt. Suicide dive. Sends Jay into that announce table. Seven minutes to go in this match. Snap Mare on the outside. Kick. It's been all Young Bucks so far. Well, not all Young Bucks, but they've remained in control of this match for most of the time here. This is exactly what I think we were expecting from two teams of this caliber. This is what we are treated to in the general admission wrestling tag division. Slice bread from Matt going for the pin off of that. Can he end it right here too? No. Jay kicks out. Matt headed to the outside. Right, I'm not sure what he was thinking there. These young bucks, man, they're uh, they're eccentric and they're unpredictable. Middle rope, moonsault. Now the booze raining down for the Bucks. Now these, these fans, I, I'm not sure if they know what they want, but oh, we're getting another version. More bang for your buck here, but Nick is the one. Matt goes for the for the 450 and he gets it, and now Nick going for the moonsault. More, more bang for your buck, it hits again. And again, not going for the pin. You gotta feel confident here, and, and again, I think the wrong decision was made, not going for the pin off of that. Jay finds himself back in control. This is not where you want to be. Nick Jackson up on the top turnbuckle. Jay going up top. This is bad news. Superplex. Oh, my. What a match this has been. Jay sends Nick back in. Five minutes left in this match. Wow. Wow. I don't know if I've seen a better tag match in a long time. Jay has been in there a while. And I think trying to work Nick back into his own corner so he can tag in his brother. Looked like he may have been going for that. And Nick Jackson manages to get him back. You got to feel like the, the Bucks are a little bit more. Oh, my God. Nick. Nick Jackson going to answer with his own superplex to the outside. Oh, my. What an unbelievable match. Nick Jackson survives the superplex and answers with his own. Oh, what a strike. It's just, they're just going at it right now. Back heel kick misses. And now I think Nick just trying to, trying to find himself a little bit. Trying to catch his breath, maybe. Jay Uso. The Usos are going for a win here. They won in controversial fashion against G.O.D., but they're looking to put this thing away. Jay Uso, Nick to his feet, super kick, and it's avoided by Nick Jackson. Jackson sends Uso back into his corner. Jay trying to fight out. Monkey flip again. Remember, Jay has been in this match almost five minutes now. 
without a tag. You got to think that he is trying to get Matt Jackson or Nick Jackson into the Uso corner. Avo avoiding those running knees. Three minutes left. Now laying in the strikes. Going maybe for Samoa and drop. Gun stun from Nick going for the pin. Wow, Jay kicks out before one. Unbelievable. You're talking about, you're talking about what a display here from Jay. And now Jimmy's got Jackson locked up. Big knee. Pop up Samoan drop. Jay, I think he's maybe looking for that dangerous super kick a third time. He connects that time. Dragging Nick into the middle of the ring, but Matt is there. Is Matt going to be quick enough to break up the pin? Here comes Jimmy. Jimmy ties him up. Usos win. Wow. What a match. What a match. What a way to start Wednesday Night Storm. I mean, we have such a great show. I don't know if it can top that. Unbelievable. Jay Uso with a with the performance of a lifetime. Wow. The Usos are going to the finals. They will have a chance to win the GAW Tag Team Tournaments for the first time. Unbelievable. Up next... Wow, up next is the Intercontinental Champion, Kofi Kingston, in action. Can it top this? We'll see. Well, now we welcome one of the most terrifying men in the entire world. There is nothing exciting. There's nothing high-flying about Walter. It's just straight pain that he inflicts and he made his intentions known last week when he told Kofi Kingston the Intercontinental title is the workhorse belt and that is what Walter is the greatest technician in the world he gets a chance to prove it against the newly minted Intercontinental Champion and speaking of the new champion listen to the fans reaction to Kofi Kingston. An electrifying entrance for an electrifying man. Kofi Kingston, he is the definition of a champion. He's already, he's been out doing charity work, spending time with the Boys and Girls Club in LA, which is where Wednesday Night Storm is emanating from tonight. Kofi Kingston is everything you want a champion, and now he has a chance to really prove himself against one of the greatest ring technicians in the world. It's the champion, Kofi Kingston, and Walter in non-title action. Ten-minute time limit belt not on the line here, but certainly you'd have to believe that if Walter manages to pick up a victory, he will get a chance to fight for this Intercontinental Championship. Kingston, big drop kick. It takes a lot of guts to do what Kofi Kingston is doing and, and put your belt on the line so early, especially against against a man of, of this caliber of Walter. And, of course, Adam Cole did it, and, and credit where it's due, absolutely. But just the size difference alone between these two individuals. Speaking of which, Kofi going for the suplex. That would be that would be something. Walter turns it around into one of his own. We haven't seen many men suplex a man of this size. Wow, Walter just pure strength from the ring general. They call him that for a reason. Cut I mean, just look at the ease at which he lifts Kofi Kingston, who's not a small individual, okay? Walter going for the pin, trying to pin the champion. Kingston kicks out at one. Oh, 
like we mentioned later on tonight we will get to hear from Cody Rhodes and I'm sure that 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 uh, we'll get his opinion on well the attack on Alistair Black as well as the uh, technical difficulties involving our interview with Kazuchika Okada last week Walter just going to town on the Intercontinental Champion right now. And now Walter trying to put things away with a Dragon Sleeper. Walter has all sorts of submissions that he, of course, is proficient in. Trained for years in Austria and Germany. Kingston manages to get the knees out, but Walter shuts him down and now sends him over the top rope. Going for that massive chop. Kingston manages to avoid it. Those chops from Walter. They've spelt doom for many men over the course of the ring general's career. Kingston flying clothesline misses, and now he eats that gigantic chop from the Austrian. Oh, my God. Walter just sticking him up on the barricade and... Hits him with that massive boot. One wonders how how Walter has not been a champion in GAW yet. Of course, oh my God. But Kingston answers back with one of his own. Of course, Walter has not been a full-time GAW competitor until the last couple months. Kingston, beautiful rolling neck breaker. Is that enough to put the challenger away. Kingston with the leg drop. Is that enough to put Walter the big challenger away? Walter kicks out. And now Kingston. We know what he's warming up here. He used it to beat Adam Cole. Trouble in paradise. Walters dominated most of this match, but the Trouble in Paradise, one of the most devastating moves that we've seen in wrestling, isn't enough to put Walter away. One, two, no! Walter kicks out. How about this? Oh my. Kingston, is he going to go for it again? Trouble in Paradise? No, Walter this time avoids it and answers with the big boot. Puts the champion on his back. And now Walter going for his patent, one of his patented. Oh, I thought he was going for the power bomb. No, he goes for for it looked like the rolling cutter. Now Walter may be setting up one of his absolutely devastating, dangerous power bomb. No, he just hits him with the gigantic lariat. Has Walter just pinned the Intercontinental Champion? Two, three. Wow. Walter has pinned the Intercontinental Champion. He used that massive lariat. Kofi Kingston has been pinned in his first defense. Well, of course, the belt wasn't on the line, but his first match is becoming champion. Wow. Uh, I got to say, I, I wasn't expecting it. And, and uh, you know what this means? This means that champions now I believe are 0 and 4 so far in GAW this this is really what's incredible about about GAW anything can happen any given night Walter you have to believe will be getting an intercontinental championship shot because he has now pinned the champion but up next up next we hope to hear from Cody Rhodes.
Well, folks, as you would expect, we, we had to cut away from that, and now, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say. A masked, a masked man coming in and attacking Cody as he, as he gets into the parking lot getting ready for his interview. I, I, I don't really know what to say, and this is now, this is now becoming a pattern. You had Alistair Black... Two weeks ago, being attacked, we had a photo. We had Kazuchi Okada's interview uh, last week that got disrupted, and we had a photo of of a man tampering with our electrical systems. And now we we actually have video footage of of a masked man attacking Cody. I know I haven't been talking much about this match coming up because, of course, the quality of the first tag team match that we saw. If this one is anything like that, we're in for a real treat, War Machine and the Lucha Brothers. But you can't deny just what is going on right now and how disturbing it is when it comes to these men who are supposed to have a chance for the for the uh, for a, a, a chance in a fatal four-way for the GAW World Championship. I'm sorry, I, my words are getting twisted. I, I can't believe what's going on right now. Um, Speaking of those men, we had this tweet from Alistair Black that will show on screen right now. And Black will have a match next week saying he needs a fight. And there's just there's so much we don't know. And we actually have another announcement to make. Uh, GAW World Champion Samoa Joe will speak after this match before our main event tonight but for now we have to get ourselves back into the mindset of some tag team wrestling or machine taking on the lucha brothers pentagon and rose starting things off and of course earlier today earlier in this episode we saw the usos taking care of the young bucks in a legendary match a really unbelievable showing from both teams. And so the winner of this will face the Usos in two weeks for the GAW Tag Team titles, which are currently vacant. Last held by, of course, the Revival before Dash Wilder was injured in in their match against the Lucha Brothers at Nitro 9, and they were forced to vacate stun gun from Roe onto Pentagon now you may not know it but these two men in right now they are the powerhouses of their respective teams of course Ray Phoenix Ray Phoenix we know is one of the best high flyers in the entire world but but Hanson from War Machine well he's as athletic as they come for his size and now we'll see Phoenix for the first time. Pentagon launching Phoenix into the Meteora. But Rose somehow makes the tag around Ray Phoenix. And now we've got the two high flyers in this match. Hansen is the heaviest man, but he is, he is one hell of an athlete. And hopefully we'll see a little bit of that. Hansen... Dragging Phoenix into his corner, but Roe is not there, and Phoenix lands the kick, trying to get out. And Phoenix with a beautiful tilt-a-whirl DDT. Is that enough now to pin Hanson of War Machine? One, no. A little too early for that. Lucha Brothers being booed here. Beautiful running knee. These two teams, not a ton of history against each other. Oh my God, look at how deep he's sitting on that Boston Crab. But that's a tall ask to submit a man of that size. Phoenix gets right up after that kick. Oh, elbow from Hansen. Phoenix, though, trying to stay on top here. Neither of these teams have seen the Usos very much. Of course, the Usos have not even been in GAW 
for a year as of yet. Massive power bomb. Hansen going up top, but he didn't see Phoenix get out of the way. And now Pentagon back in, but Hansen, he's going through with it. Wow, he was looking for the Swanton. It didn't connect. Pentagon going for the pin. Hansen, Hansen's grabbed the rope. Hansen's grabbed the rope. Hansen grabbed the rope. The, the referee didn't see it. He didn't otherwise try to kick out. The Lucha Brothers, the Lucha Brothers win. Roe is, is displeased. I, I can't say I blame him. Roe disappointed with Hansen and the Lucha Brothers are moving on. Ladies and gentlemen, it's finally time to figure out, hopefully, Charlotte Flair's motivation for attacking Asuka these past couple weeks. First, she hunted her down backstage. Then, during a match with the women's champion, Charlotte Flair beat her, took the DQ, and maybe finally we will learn. Well, hang on a second. Asuka. Asuka showed up. Asuka's back here. She's chasing down Charlotte Flair. Flair doesn't realize. Flair doesn't realize she's back there in Asuka. Asuka goes straight for the women's champion, is not taking this lying down, and I don't blame her. This is how Charlotte Flair found Asuka first. She attacked Asuka during an entrance, and now Asuka, the Empress combination. Boom. Absolutely taking it to Charlotte Flair. The fans love it. I'm telling you, Asuka is a fan favorite, and she is not done. She is not done yet. Empress combination again. She is making Charlotte Flair pay for all this. We know that Asuka, she is, she is the strong, silent type. We know that. And now Asuka Lock. Now the Asuka Lock is in. The Asuka Lock is in. Wow. Asuka wasn't going to settle this with words. She's got Charlotte Flair to tap out. And the women's champion, Asuka has made her presence felt. I've got no desire to spend any more time here than I have to. Whoever this is, I don't care who you attack. I've never needed to cheap shot people to get what I want, but that's just me, but I'm not an idiot. You're not as secretive as you seem to think. I know you're trying to get me. So I'll tell you what, next week, first thing, I'll be out in that ring and you'll walk out and face me like a man. Well, two major developments now in the last couple minutes. Of course, we had, I don't know what's going to happen with Ward Machine and the Lucha Brothers winning that tag match. Hansen grabbed the rope. The referee didn't see it. Should have been a rope break. It should have broken the pin. So we'll wait to hear something on that. And of course, we have just heard from GAW World Champion Samoa Joe. I think it's safe to assume that whoever has been attacking uh, Alistair Black and Cody and whoever disrupted the interview with uh, Kazuchika Okada last episode probably is the same person. And so hopefully they will reveal themselves next week with champion Samoa Joe making an appearance for now though in our main event we have buddy murphy the man who who cost sin cara possibly the cruiserweight championship by attacking him last week when sin cara was was battling ricochet with cruiserweight championship on the line and n s silence uncharacteristic silence from buddy murphy about that about why he did it what his motivations might have been but the match was made murphy against sin cara for the main event and well i mean i, I wonder if the winner of this will get a cruiserweight title shot it's hard to know but we'll see what happens these are two of the most exciting men in the business that's all we know and the main event is next no time limit here in our main event Murphy immediately starts out with a big falcon arrow. And you gotta think. Elbow drop here. 
you got to think that maybe the the winner of this gets a cruiserweight title match, possibly? I mean, Sin Cara was the number one contender. He was fighting for the title. Sin Cara, oh my god, he was looking for that Tope Canelo, and Murphy just sidesteps it. Sin Cara takes the brunt of that. Murphy has been in control early, swinging Fisherman's neck breaker there. Sin Cara with the jawbreaker. Running Hurricane Rana now. What is, what is going on? Ricky the Dragon. Steve, Ricky Steamboat is here. We haven't seen him in GAW. What is... And Steve, Steamboat's back. He's with a bat. Steamboat's got a bat. Oh, my God. Ricky Steamboat lays out Sin Cara with a baseball bat Murphy going for the pin off of that one two three Ricky the dragon steamboat has just helped buddy Murphy to beat Sin Cara Wow Wow what I mean what is he aligned with buddy Murphy I I don't understand what the motivations Wow. Wow. Wow, there's so much we don't know about this, and hopefully we'll get our answers next week. And next week, well, I mean, we'll have to see if we will get uh, a fatal four-way of some kind for number one contendership next episode on Wednesday Night Storm. So much we don't know. You're going to have to tune in to find out. Subscribe to GA Sports to get that episode as well as all of our other content. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Yeah,